It's day three in the feeding clinic, and super skinny under-eater Madassa is about to have his mind blown by an extra large curry and a family-sized tub of trifle. I do have a surprise for you. What's that? There's two dots of that. You're joking. How yeah. you can manage to eat all that, plus dessert, and knock back drink as well on top of that, is beyond me. Faced with two small, dry samosas and chips, James is feeling equally unenthusiastic. His portion still seems really small for, a, for an evening meal. Mm -hmm. James might be unimpressed with the portions, but for Madassa, watching someone else eat his meals is revealing to him where he goes wrong at home. The thing that I'm beginning to acknowledge now is, is the, the tiredness factor. I'm feeling tired, that's killing my hunger as well. Because your body's eating all of your energy, isn't it? Mm. Looks like Madas has finally begun to realise there might be a relationship between his lifestyle, his lousy eating habits and his weight. Come on in, Madassa. To drive the message home, Dr Christian wants to show him some of the conditions he and all under-eaters risk developing if they don't get the nutrients they need. With you, it's not just about weight. With the amounts that you're eating, you're not actually getting enough of virtually all of the important minerals and nutrients that you need, and long-term, that can lead to problems. This is all about fibre. If you don't have enough fibre, this is one of the conditions that you can develop, and this is called diverticulitis. And these are little hernia through the muscular wall of the gut, and you can imagine food gets stuck in those, and it gets infected and it gets extremely agonisingly painful, and it bleeds. Good dietary sources of fibre include pulses, whole grains, oats, apples and pears, all cheap and easily available, but sadly lacking from Madassa's diet. This slightly different picture. Some green stuff on somebody's face. <laughs> it's really quite horrible, isn't it? Yeah. This is a condition called seborrheic dermatitis, and it's a sort of build-up of skin flakes plus greases and oils that form these really not very nice white plaque. One of the causes of this is a deficiency in a vitamin called riboflavin, vitamin B2. And you find that in cereals and milk and animal products. If you eat very small quantities, if you're only getting 1,300 calories a day, you are deficient in this. OK, one more, which is over here. And this is a disease that we don't see so commonly in this country, but we absolutely do see quite a lot in South America. And it's a disease called pellagra. And it's caused by deficiency in a vitamin called vitamin B3, or niacin. Vitamin B3, or niacin, is found in beans, fish, yeast and tomatoes. This is not a nice disease. We doctors remember it by the four Ds. OK. Dermatitis, which is this, diarrhoea, dementia, and death. But you are deficient in this, so you let that carry on to extreme levels, and you might start noticing problems with your skin. And what's the answer to all of this? Eat more. Essentially, it's as simple as that. It's actually shocking, really. I thought it was just a simple factor of being underweight. It's definitely encouraging me to like do something about it now, then leave it till later. Another day, another dinner. And while James contemplates an empty plate... I don't know how you survive on it. Really don't. Madassa seems, finally, to be taking Dr Christian's advice as he tackles his extra-large doner kebab. I think what's actually surprised me today about myself would be the way I think about food and about the amount that I can actually consume. Putting it down to that, I've never really had that push. Go a little bit extra. Yeah, go a bit extra, you know what I mean? It'll do you good, that type of thing. You're always told never to eat more than what your body needs because it's just greed. But you're, you're under-eating and you're not getting enough calories today, hence being underweight. So um, it's me, I'm eating... 5,000, 6,000 calories too much per day, uh, hence why I'm overweight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm totally done now. Totally full. Don't look it. Don't look it. It feels it. Well. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It looks like the pennies drop for our diet swappers, but for the 1.6 million eating disorder sufferers in Britain, 
anxiety and unhealthy eating habits have escalated into serious illness. Eight weeks ago, we helped three women with eating disorders embark on a course of treatment to set them on the way to full recovery. 32-year-old Meena Krishnan suffers from bulimia. 34-year-old Emma Paul has anorexia nervosa. And 19-year-old Erin Ruddick straddles both illnesses with a condition called anorexia binge purge subtype. With the help of dietitian Ursula Philpott and consultant psychiatrist Dr. Helena Fox, the women have addressed their biggest food fears and negative body images. I can't really think of desserts in terms of keeping it down. I want to be thin, but I don't want to want to be thin. I'm constantly thinking about food. After six weeks on the course, Erin had an epiphany. I just think it's made me realise how bad I really am. And I think of being in complete denial about the extent. This realisation was confirmed when she collapsed and was admitted to hospital. It was quite scary for me. My hands turned blue and spasmed a bit. I felt kind of outside of myself. Over the next few days, Erin's physical and mental condition was monitored, and the professional advice was that she should stay at home to build up her strength before continuing any further treatment. Facing up to the realities of an eating disorder is a really important step on the road to recovery. She'll now be able to go on and get the more intensive support that she needs. Today, Emma and Mina are meeting Ursula for the last time. Their final challenge is to share a restaurant meal together something people with eating disorders find incredibly hard and often avoid. Ordering off a menu is um, something I haven't found easy. I think it's a lot of my anorexia when I'm reading a menu of uh, where the carbs are, the fat is. And... I guess what you're saying is rather than looking at the menu and thinking, oh, that's what I fancy or I'd like the taste of that, actually, you tend to look at it and think, what's the nutritional composition? Yes. Yeah. The eight-week course has been incredibly tough for Emma. A few weeks ago, even eating a pasta salad was a real struggle. You can't do any more. No, I'm just I'm fine, thank you. But last week, Emma had a major breakthrough. It was time to silence the inner critic she'd named Ed. I Yesterday, glad. I made a promise that I was not going to say... Ed thinks this or feels anymore. this. Mm. So, he, yeah, that word is, not, is no longer going to be said. At the beginning, Emma was very defended and very stark, but she's used the support well and is now gaining weight and taking risks with her food. Today, Ursula's up to the stakes by challenging the women to choose two courses from the menu. Something I do find pretty difficult is having more than one course. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a difficulty today, I think. <laughs> you shouldn't worry about not ordering them because you're not going to finish them, but, but really view it as, you know, I'll have a taste, at least. Mina's succeeded in ordering a starter and a main, while Emma's plucked up the courage to order a main course and a dessert. Good signs that her attitudes to food have begun a fundamental shift. But thinking back about the sessions, what do you think the most difficult ones were for you? Most difficult? Mm -hmm. I think they've all been difficult. <laughs> so, yeah, two months ago, I would have just given up on this because it's gone cold. No, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm still eating it, even though it's gone animal. cold. For Mina, the eight weeks have been generally positive. She's been a great support for her peers and started to understand her condition better. But she's still battling her desire to binge. If it were just the crumble and me in the room and no one else around, <laughs> one of us wouldn't make it. We just need to break that cycle of the binging and purging. And it seems that you're going to need more intensive support to do that and probably something like a symptom interruption program where you would go into hospital for an elected amount of time to break the cycle. Recovery includes an ongoing commitment to practicing behavioural changes, challenging thoughts, increasing motivation, having a lot of encouragement from therapists and ongoing commitment from the sufferers. After finishing their two-course dinner and successfully completing their eight-week course, Mina and Emma have made significant progress towards a healthier future. The average length of recovery for somebody with an eating disorder is around seven years, so to get any behaviour change in eight weeks is really significant for these girls. I'm going to beat this. I want a life without it. <laughs> I desperately, no, I really desperately want a life without it. It'd be so nice just to sit down and 
eat what I feel like, when I feel like. Because it's got me thinking more about the eating disorder and what to do about it, it's um, perhaps given me a bit more determination and optimism for the future. Here's to the future. Health and happiness. Yes. If you've been affected by any of the issues raised, visit channel4.com forward slash supersize v super skinny. Back in the feeding clinic, it's the final morning, and over a small portion of cereal for James and a large muesli with fruit and hot oats for Madassa, the guys seem finally to have discovered their enthusiasm for the task ahead. Oh, slow down, it's not a race. I don't think I'd even eat it that quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doing what I used to do now. What's that? You've got the next mouthful ready before you even finish. It's all thinking in your bad habits. I've definitely realised I have to reduce my portions, and that is it. I feel really good within myself that I've actually tried compared to when I first actually came here at the beginning of the week, and I think I've pushed past my original boundaries, so I think it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's an achievement within itself. It seems our diet disasters have finally seen the light. Having reached the end of their stay in the feeding clinic, James and Madassa will be leaving with 12-week tailor-made healthy eating plans. Being here for this week has flicked a switch in my head. You know, I know that my body can go without food now. If I miss a meal, I don't have to double up on the next meal. There's been a roller coaster of emotions involved. If I've come through so far, I can't see myself backing out. I really want to, like, carry on to see whether it makes a difference or not. This is it. That's it. Week over. Lovely to meet you. You too, matey. Hope it goes well for you. I'm hoping that once my friends and family see this, they're actually going to help me along. You know, they, they won't always see me as Big Jim, the human dustbin. Mm -hmm.